Welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance. On today's episode we're going to have a look at how to get a perfect credit score. Now all I can return for this free advice is a like to help me with the YouTube algorithm and a sub if you're feeling generous. Otherwise let's get right into it. A few years ago I was in the same boat as some of you might be right now where I had an average credit score and it wasn't because I was doing anything particularly wrong. It wasn't because I would made any late payments on my credit card. In my case it was because I hadn't built up enough credit and used that credit in the correct way to improve my score. And what I found was there wasn't a whole lot of information out there on how I could actually improve my credit score unless I was willing to pay the likes of Experian £9.99 a month which as a student at that time that was just never going to happen. <laughs> that just was not in the budget. So I struggled those years in trying to improve my credit score and trying to understand exactly why I was being given this credit score. So what you might not know is if you are not currently enrolled on the electoral roll with your address then that works against you for your credit score so very very easy one to tick off the list go get yourself enrolled that will appear on your credit score and that will actually improve your credit score by possibly 30 points or it did in my case if you are already enrolled on the electoral roll i would go and check your credit score online I do i do that with credit karma personally because i find them quite useful in comparison to other sites that i've tried in the past but if you are currently enrolled but that's not showing on your credit score then you do need to give them a call and let them know that something's gone wrong on your credit score so you want to get that fixed. Now if you don't know how to check your credit score again like I've said before I use Credit Karma. They're free to use. There are the likes of Experian which are free to use to a certain degree so Experian will give you a score out of 999 whereas the others give you a score out of 710. So if you get a different score with Experian than other credit score companies it's not that you're doing anything wrong it's just the way that they're measuring that. My next tip would be something that I've mentioned time and time again in other videos. Whilst you might have a credit limit of say £10,000 or £5,000, we'll go with the £10,000 in this example, you don't want to be using more than 10 to 25% of that £10,000. So the maximum amount of balance that you want on that card is £2,500 if it is a £10,000 credit limit and then divide that by two to get a £1,250 if your credit limit is is £5,000 and the reason for that is because credit card companies will have a look at your utilisation on that card and if it goes above that point then that works against you. So I found again if I have 30% utilisation on any card I've seen my credit score drop by somewhere between 30 and 40 points. There's two things that you can do if you're currently using more than 25% and that is you can either go to your credit card company and say I want to have an increase on my limit so that'll then push you hopefully below that 25% or try and find a card where you've got a promotional code or a very low transfer limit on that card and transfer the balance to another card if you can otherwise put a budget together put a plan together to get that under that 25% as soon as you can now this utilization percentage works card by card so if you have say five credit cards and on each one of those you're using say 40% on card one 20% on card card two and then 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent on the final three then that's going to work against you because they're going to look at that first credit card where you're utilizing the 40 percent they're not going to take into account the fact that you're not using 90 percent of your credit limit on three of those cards and you're not using 80 percent of your credit limit on one of those other cards so it's not it's not an average it's card by card is what i'm trying to get across now another thing that you might not know is that credit card companies that take into account the average length of credit that you have so in my instance, I took out a credit card about five years before this point when I was looking at my credit score and I'd had that card and I'd had amounts on there. I'd never fully cleared off the amount down to nil. So I'd had a credit on there for those five years before and then I think I had another credit card. So they take into account at that point, whatever that credit is, they would divide that by five to six years. So they're taking an average of what your total credit amount is. And so if you have a credit card currently that you're not using that you've had for quite a while, don't close that down if you can because that's going to negatively affect your score. So you might see that if you close down a credit card 
which seems a bit weird. It seems almost like the opposite. You're being punished for closing a car down that you don't need to use because you don't require that credit. It's best just to keep hold of that car for a rainy day. Worst case scenario, ring up the credit card company and say, I want to downsize that card. You can reduce the type of accounts that you have with that credit card company. And you can always do this when you ring them up to say, I'm going to close it. They might even offer you to go down to a smaller type of credit card with less fees, less annual fees, etc. So that's just another way or something to look out for. One thing that people don't realise is that say today you're looking at your credit score and you make a payment to completely clear one of your credit cards or to reduce it below that 25%. Unfortunately, it takes about three to six months for that to have any impact on your credit score at all. Why the delay? That's just how long it takes to work through the system. This is also why, and this is something again I didn't know, is that you want to be having a look at your credit score at least three to six months before you go ahead and get a mortgage because if you need credit of any kind, you don't want to be applying for a credit card or a loan around the time of getting a mortgage because what will happen is any hard searches that those credit card companies take out on your account, that will negatively affect your credit score. So if you decide to go for a credit card at the same time as a mortgage, it's the red flag to, to the bank or whoever's providing the mortgage to you. So it's really not a good idea. The key here is to plan. If you're going to go get a mortgage or a big purchase like that where you're going to need your credit score to be as good or excellent as it possibly can be, then you want to make sure that you don't take out any credit or loans three to six months before this point for that reason. Now, my next point is if you have a look through your credit history, you can actually see, again, what they call soft and hard searches on your credit score. A soft search is not going to impact your credit score and it's just a search that's usually carried out by the likes of phone companies and in some cases car insurance companies when they're having a look at, at your scores to, to decide whether or not to give you insurance so if you have a little look through there and you see something that's actually coming up as a hard search when it should have been a soft search and you can have a look online for various types of soft searches as well do your own research and if you find that there's a hard search on there you can go and ring that company up and say hang on a minute you've put a hard search on my account that's negatively affected my credit score can you please take a look and in a lot of cases they'll then change that on their end and notify the credit bureau so that's something that you can do if you do find an error of any kind there is also an option definitely if you're using credit karma and i'm sure this is the case for the others where if you see something on your credit report that you don't agree with you can contest it there's a little button that says you know i don't agree with this on my credit report you can file that with them if this has happened to you please do leave a comment below so we can all learn from that now another question that you might have and i've seen it before and it's happened to me too <laughs> is where your score goes down but again as far as you're aware you've done everything right you've paid on time you've done nothing wrong and you're looking at it thinking hang on what has happened here so the reason is because either you've gone over your utilization of the 25 percent i'm talking about again or it's because there's been a recent hard search so go look at those first before you do anything the only other reasons why that would have gone down usually is because you've either taken out another credit card or loan or you've just recently done a balance transfer so last month when that balance transfer took place at that point in time it wasn't impacting your credit score so sometimes it depends on the statement date but the credit card companies will take a snapshot in time so say at the very end of the month they take a snapshot of your account so say the 31st of July. So they're going to take a snapshot of your account on that date. But on the 30th of July, let's say you did a balance transfer. So if they look at that credit card, you don't have a balance on there because you've transferred the entire balance off to another credit card. Now, if we go over to credit card B, that amount that you've transferred onto there is not currently showing. So when they take their snippet at that point in time, there's nothing on there either. So when that gets reported to the credit card companies, they will see you've paid off all of that amount but that is not anywhere else so your credit score will temporarily go up potentially so if it's gone down it might be because this is the next month after so when they're then taking their little screenshot in time it's now showing up so that could impact your score too so that's something else to watch out for or be aware of the other question people ask 
is, well, has my credit score gone down or will my credit score be impacted because I have more than one card? And the answer is no. I'll delve into this a lot deeper on another video, but it's actually good to have more than one card. I know when I first started out with credit cards, I actually applied for two credit cards and got accepted by both and I took them both out. I didn't know at the time that that would do me any good, but it does because by utilising the credit on both those cards within the 25%, I was actually building my credit rapport quicker than if I'd had one. Disclaimer as always, you need to make sure if you're taking out credit cards or loans of any kind that you could pay that money back. Always make sure that you're in control and that you know that you're not going to be tempted to go out and might make massive purchases for no reason that you can pay the money back. Never borrow more than you can pay back. Now if you found this video useful please do leave a comment below or if you have any questions, if you've got your own story to tell, if you've put any of this advice into practice then I'd love to hear back. Otherwise I hope you have a nice day and I shall see you on the next video.